Bulavinaka and welcome to Talk Dinners and to all of those who are tuning in from around the region, hello to you as well. Kava has been Fiji's traditional drink for ages now and it has been consumed traditionally, that is in Tanwa and Abilo. But imagine having processed kava as a dietary supplement. Well, tonight on the show, we talk to the men behind this idea here in the old capital of Fiji, Levuka town. We take a look from the time kava is planted and its process. And could this be another economic lifeline for the small town of Levuka? All that is coming for the next half hour. Zain Yashida was born and bred here in the old capital of Fiji. He left Levuka as a teenager to pursue his dreams. One of his dreams was to return to Levuka and do something for the economically struggling town. Years after, he is back and with a plan. Well, I'm quite biased towards Levuka. I was born here, I grew up here. You know, I left uh, Levuka as an 18-year-old with a dream to one day come back here. And um, through Takim, I, um, I've been able to do that, you know, to um, uh, come back and support the community that um, you know, really did so much for me. You know, kept my feet on the ground and uh, still really does. Who would have thought that Kava would work as a dietary supplement especially when it is consumed traditionally and socially here. It's believed having cover in moderate amounts works better as a relaxant. And that's what caught Yoshida's attention. I was actually uh, working in Penang in Malaysia in 2006 and I read about the founder of Red Bull and how he founded the company and um, I looked at the um, growing energy markets and I thought, you know, if the consumer is willing to pay for an energy drink, I'm sure at the end of the day they pay for something to calm them down, to relax them. And um, having um, grown up in Fiji, born in Fiji, I thought of Kava straight away. And um, the first step was then to contact the University of the South Pacific in Fiji to come up with a form of extraction uh, other than an ethanol or an alcohol extract, um, which we could mix with fruit flavors at that time. and. Um, uh, check the um, efficacy on um, you know, the dosage forms that were required to give you that calming and uh, soothing effect. Processing of Takimai is a long process that starts from the farm. So now we take over an hour ride to one of Yoshida's biggest supply of green cover. After a bumpy ride along the coast of Ovalo, we arrive at Etuate Dalos house. We now have to continue on passing through rivers, muddy and slippery paths. So happened that weather was just not on our side at all. It's Yamana farms like these that are the heartbeat of not only the cover industry but businesses like Takimai. Also, supply to Baba na onche kitibu gina, kung wala lahat ng musas. Oh, sa tubo sa mga cover na indulto, hindi ako. Wala green o kaya sa tiyaw siyong eh tinondulo na kanya Takimai ka. Dalindalo is one of more than 40 farmers that supply Yoshida with green cover. This speaks volumes of the impact Takimai is making on the cover farmers of Ovalau. Yoshida directly buys cover from the farmers. Once it's taken to the factory, 
the processing of takimai begins. So what we're basically doing here is we've already processed the waka that we use or the roots of the plant for today. So we've got some of the lewena, which is the basal uh, stump of the plant uh, that you can see here. That we peel first, as you can see that uh, Setarek is working on, before we take it into the factory for further processing. Because uh, some of the concerns that we have and some of the concerns that um, the WHO had was possible toxins in the skin of the kava plant. So we want to ensure that uh, if there is a possibility of any sort of toxins in the skin, um, or any component of the plant that that's removed before any processing, any extraction is done. So what we're doing here after the cleaning uh, stage is the cutting stage. Uh, what we do here basically is to cut down the roots and the basal um, stump of the plant into an acceptable size before proceeding to the next stage. It's about standardizing the whole process in manufacturing. You've got to standardize the size before you move on to the next process so you have consistency in your inputs and your outputs. That's critical. After the cutting stage, we actually put it through an uh, industrial mincing process We're using different size cutting plates and cutting knives to bring it down to another consistent size that we can use at the next stage of the process, which is the extraction stage. Cutting with the uh, lewena compared to the waka is different because of the amount of fiber in the waka and the lewena. So the lewena is a lot harder to cut because of the fibrous material content with that material. What we're doing at this stage is uh, the extraction stage. So what we're doing basically is squeezing the root material um, with all the juices and separating the fibrous material from the juice, which we then further process. This is the desired product at this stage. The fiber of kava goes through the whole process again. The kava is now taken to a dryer where it is dried for hours. So the last stage is the actual grinding of the um, kava extract that comes out of the oven um, down to a fine powder form that's consistent with uh, input into our finished product um, at a certain micron size and that's what we export from Fiji. Before the powdered kava leaves for the United States for flavoring and packaging, it is kept in a freezer at a high temperature to increase the product's shelf life. Yoshida's focus so far has only been to buy kava from the farmers on the island of Ovalo. However, in doing so, Yoshida cannot afford risk compromising the quality of green kava he needs for Takimai. After all, he just started this unique venture. So he must ensure that farmers plant healthy and disease-free plants. He has set up a nursery from where healthy young kava plants are supplied to the farmers. However, not any plant is taken to the nursery. The whole process of mass propagation starts at the Yangona plantation itself. The first step is to identify a healthy plant. One of the um, main uh, causes of uh, cover dieback is uh, CMB. There's uh, others, however, one is known as uh, short hole, the other one is uh, root rot nematodes. But apparently CMB has been identified as one of the major causes of uh, cover dieback disease. Then I'm going to use to cut a piece of uh, inch by inch uh, sample from the first three leaves, yeah. I'm gonna cut it up, insert it in this, and then uh, use the uh, tester to see if it goes like both lines are positive. 
that basically means that this particular plant has got CMB. So we would not be able to use that for further propagation in terms of taking uh, the pieces to do uh, tissue culture, things like that. So uh, we'll pass this, we'll move to the next plant. So let me test for this particular one if it really works. Uh, has it got a CMB? By the looks of the plant, we don't really see CMB in here. Okay? So we'll just test it out. Apparently at some places it's been determined that up to 40%, while a few other areas it has been said that up to 60% of the population is basically wiped out just because of this uh, cover dieback disease. Cover plant itself has derived a mechanism, even if one of those uh, stems has been affected by CMB, and if the plant is a year and older, it would still develop new shoots which may not, may not have the disease. So that's something good about it, but if the plants are one year or younger, the whole uh, bunch of plants may be wiped out just because of that. This process now moves to the next stage. This is basically taken the whole piece taken to the to the nursery and then uh, propagated. So once we take it to the nursery, just one of these nodes. One of these nodes, it, it, you can see the, the shoot coming out. So one of these nodes is laid in a nursery the mixture normally people use soil but the best mixture is 80% uh, perlite and 20% compost it lays there and then given uh, three to four months it's going to grow into about uh, 30 mm 40 mm plant the nodes are then taken here in a nursery so we're taking these individual um, kava nodes sticking them in our potting medium and often soaking them in a seaweed concentrate first to accelerate them. It really activates the hormones within the plant and so on. And then setting it into these plants, uh, into these pots or tra propagation trays. Each tray accommodates about 36 to 42 nodes. So you can see a very small area. Potentially we have four, up to 42 mature kava plants within a few years. Now if you multiply that times this entire nursery, which is only one of three, we can accommodate up to 25 to 27,000 kava plants or seedlings within this, within this uh, first nursery, this initial phase. From phase one, after about five weeks, we go into small pots. Now we've gone now from 42 nodes, germinating nodes, in a tray to 16. And again, we provide a locally sourced potting medium here. We want to ensure that it's sterile because if we include local soils to any great extent without analyzing them first, we may be introducing nematodes. Here, we go into a larger pot. After, after about three weeks at this intermediate stage with 16 plants per tray, we go into our final tray, which has five to nine pots, depending on how we squeeze them in. And again, we go into another formulation to ensure that as the plant grows, much like a child goes from being, being weaned off uh, mother's milk, so to speak, into a, into a more of a solid diet. The, the kava is really no different. So we really need to address what aspects of the plant are growing at that particular point and try to augment it. In particular, at this stage, we're ending up, we're, gonna be, we're going to be harvesting the roots the rhizome, or what we call lawena here, and the basal nodes. Because above that point, we don't want to consume or process any photosynthetic part of the plant. Any part of the plant that's exposed to sunlight produces certain toxins. That's why you don't have kava leaf tea. At this stage, we've got a very hardy plant that will be a, a full canopy of leaves to support the roots below because there has to be a strong synergy between the leaves and the roots. And at the same time, we're hardening the plant. We're going from 70% shade here with the initial nodes to 30% shade at interval two in the second nursery to the final stage where these are just about ready at four months to go out into the field. So the farmers get a four to five month old healthy cover plant from the nursery ready to be planted. All these are critical steps taken by Takimai to ensure the quality of cover is maintained. So we actually work 
um, in a HACCP CGMP environment where we have standard operating procedures for everything that we do here from uh, the supply chain from the farm gate, even standardizing the type of uh, kava that we use here at the factory in the um, extraction process. Uh, there's consistent procedures with the operation of how we extract the active ingredients from the plant, but also in terms of our quality control. The United States is the major market Takimai is currently targeting. That is due to the high demand for relaxant products in a market of millions. And the main reason for that is, is we've decided to kind of launch Takimai in the United States. We think that that's going to be a really good market for us to, to open up the, the Kaba business. And um, I'm sure at some point in time as Australia uh, comes to the party and decides to, to turn around their current uh, legal status and not allowing Kaba to be sold as a dietary supplement, we'll be selling in Australia. We have uh, overtures from New Zealand and, uh, and obviously in, uh, in the Far East as well. We're very anxious to open up the Asian Peninsula, not just around Singapore where our corporate offices are, but all the way up the peninsula, maybe as far as South Korea. It was the opposite of uh, the energy drink. It's the, um, as people say, it's the antithesis of the energy drink. And um, it's also an alternative to alcohol. You know, I mean, we're also working with um, trying to get kosher certification for the uh, product. Another um, avenue that we've, we're considering as well is to get halal certification for the product. You know, I'm sure there's a big uh, Middle Eastern population that would like to uh, calm and soothe their nerves from um, the everyday stresses of life. So I don't see much difference in the United States. Our core focus though is probably males first, a uh, little bit more than females, probably 20 to 44 years old, that demographic. Um, they will be people who are oriented towards, uh, may have a proclivity towards anxiety uh, or stress. Uh, as well as those that are just tired of energy drinks and energy shots and their real interest is in just calming down a little bit at night. Some people will be using it for uh, sleep help, you know, at night to just take a four ounce shot and take a deep breath, get into bed and go to sleep. And then others will use it in a social environment. That's our prediction. And maybe they'll drink uh, one, two, three shots uh, in an evening, which, we'll, which we're so excited about. It took Yoshida at least seven years to establish Takimai. He had to make sure he got everything right, especially the misconceptions on kava. I've been drinking kava for a very long time now. Um, in fact, it's been 27 years now that I've been drinking kava. And I, I've been drinking kava on a very regular basis. And I've had no side effects. I've had no issues or health concerns uh, with the amount of kava that I consume on a weekly basis. So it wasn't an issue for me. And it was about trying to prove to the world that Kava is indeed safe. In recent years, the, there has been some bans uh, overseas with using these products. Those bans have been uh, are starting to be overturned because we're realising, or the, the, uh, uh, the some of the countries overseas are realising that uh, kava in itself is uh, quite a safe product compared to some uh, other medications. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be uh, very vigilant in terms of increasing quality control of the quality of kava coming out of the South Pacific. And uh, a product such as uh, Taki Mai uh, is certainly uh, or can be warmly in, uh, supported for the work they're doing to ensure that the cultivar used, the type of kava, is of the highest quality, the manufacturing standards are also of the highest quality, uh, and that the kava itself is being standardised. The overall consumer in the United States that falls into that category is probably 125 million people. So it's a very large uh, group. There's 311 million people in the United States right now. So if you take out many of the young kids that are below 20 years old, you're going to take out 150 million people. And then people that are really aged or not well, uh, I, I wouldn't suspect that they would be drinking Takimai, but you never know. Um, since it's an all-natural product and doesn't have any drugs or uh, deleterious ingredients in it, our flavors are all natural. We use organic cane sugar and purified water along with the kava lactones that, that we put in the product. So it's, uh, no one's going to get injured by drinking it. Obviously the more you have, uh, you know, there, there can be potential consequences in terms of 
uh, inebriation, you know, people you know, drinking too much. It's, it, obviously, it's a different effect, but still, if you had, for example, lots of alcohol, the more you have, the stronger the effect. But using something like Takimai, you're looking at using, for example, a couple of bottles, uh, which should give you uh, a feeling of relaxation, uh, but without some of the, uh, you know, sort of stronger, more sedating properties uh, if you were sort of drinking bowl after bowl in a traditional setting. Taki may have been presented as a dietary supplement, hence it is also a must that it meets respective regulations. The dietary supplements in the United States have rules and regulations around them different than pharmaceutical products. Um, they also are in a different category than traditional food products like bottled water as an example. So um, dietary supplements, it, it, the way I view them in the United States is that they're, the, the regulations around them are being scrutinized pretty well by the Federal Drug Administration, which is our overall agency that manages uh, enforcement of labels and um, um, everything that is in nutrition or supplement facts on the side of a, of a, of a bottle, uh, the traditional beverage or a food product. Yoshida has invested close to $1.5 million in his ambitious project. Assistance from the government and the market development facility, MDF, through Australian aid has helped the business grow to what it is today. MDF has pumped in around $200,000 to help finance the business and has also provided technical assistance. We're looking for innovative ways to support development in Fiji's economy, particularly for investments that promote job creation and new livelihood opportunities for disadvantaged communities in rural areas and outer islands. We're obviously very proud to have supported SPE and Takimai through the Australian-funded market development facility known as MDF. MDF is our flagship um, program for private sector development in Fiji and Fiji was the first place we introduced it so it, it is a, an important program and I think uh, it's been worked so well here that it has expanded. This may be just the start of the product as future plans for Takimai is already in place. We are also considering um, distribution through spa and wellness centres, uh, we are considering health clubs um, and as we grow that, of course, and uh, understand the uh, consistent uh, consumer buying behavior, uh, we'll try to grow that across uh, other places in the United States, uh, grow uh, the product regionally, exporting to uh, Australia as well and uh, New Zealand, and uh, perhaps after that look at the Asian market as well. We are so proud of a homegrown boy who's come back again to put something in. Well, that is the show for tonight. For questions or comments, please email us on talkbusiness at fijitv.com.fj. You can also like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Join us again same time next week. Until then, have a productive week.